Some people may not realize this, but Bad Boys for Life, which was the third film in the Bad Boys franchise, was actually the most successful movie of 2020 domestically. Now, I know what you're all thinking. Wasn't that the year of the pandemic? Hey! Oh, sh Indeed it was, but you see, Bad Boys for Life came out well, about six to eight weeks before theaters started closing down and was one of the few movies that managed to actually make some serious money that year. And indeed, it was a huge, huge hit with the movie almost making half a billion dollars internationally. So it's not too much of a surprise that even if Will Smith's career has arguably taken a bit of a hit in the intervening years, Sony's decided to bring these guys back for a fourth installment. Although, of course, they can't use the obvious title, which would have been Bad Boys for Life, you know, because it's the fourth film. But instead, they call it Bad Boys Ride or Die. And you know what? It's pretty much just as much fun as any other movie in the series. So in this one, detectives Mike Lowry, once again played by Will Smith, and Marcus Burnett, once again played by Mark Lawrence, are eager to settle down and enjoy middle age, but when their late beloved captain, Joey Pants himself, Joe Pantoliano, is framed as a corrupt cop, the two must go off the grid to help clear his name. So it can't be denied that Bad Boys Ride or Die, despite being a follow-up to a massively successful film, is seemingly being treated as a bit of a less sure box office thing than it should be. Now, why is that? Well, of course, a lot has happened in Will Smith's career since 2020, with his cachet as a movie star perhaps being somewhat in jeopardy due to the infamous Oscar slap, which rocked the industry and certainly hurt his reputation. For many, this is being seen as the ultimate judge as to whether or not Smith will ever really be able to rebound with audiences. Whatever the case, though, I have to say he's chosen a pretty good comeback movie with Bad Boys still a surprisingly potent franchise, even close to 30 years after it started. The series has always lived or died by the fact that Smith and co-star Martin Lawrence have top-notch buddy cop chemistry with each other, and that's arguably only been strengthened in the intervening years. The two clearly delight in each other with their bitching their way through the film like an old married couple, yet you never doubt their love. And the film also has fun with this recurring thing from the other movies where Will Smith and Martin Lawrence are constantly waving their guns around very recklessly in each other's faces. This movie kind of makes that more of a thing because, you know, it's always been ridiculous and the film plays that up a little. So in this one, Will Smith's Lowry has bounced back from the midlife crisis he faced in the last movie to get married, albeit not to his love interest from the last film, Paula Nunez's Captain Rita Cicada, but rather his physical therapist, Christine, who's played by British actress Melanie Liburd. Some will complain that the movie reprises one of the biggest plot twists from the last film, where Mike spent a good chunk of the film recovering from a near-fatal gunshot wound, with this film centering around Martin Lawrence's Marcus having a heart attack. However, their near-death experiences do ground the franchise to some extent, with the movie reminding us right off the bat that not only are our two leads human, but the fact is they're getting older. Directors Adil and Bilal once again try to ground the franchise with very human stakes in a way that the more comic book-styled Michael Bay movies didn't really, although their former director once again gives the movie his blessing by showing up in a nifty cameo. This is probably the most emotional Bad Boys movie yet, with Mike and Marcus not only doubling down on their own brotherhood, but also their unstoppable devotion to their late captain, who was memorably played by Joe Pantoliano, and who returns in this film despite, you know, having been killed off in the last movie. Indeed, there's something touching about the idea at the movie's heart, being that loyalty trumps all, with Marcus and Mike being framed by the baddies due to their digging, although they still have their ammo pals, Alexander Ludwig's Dorn and Vanessa Hudgens's Kelly, willing to back them up. Given the fact that some folks did turn their back on Smith after the Oscar slap, it's not hard to read somewhat into the notion of legacy and loyalty that's being explored here in a way that makes it a pretty smart comeback effort for Smith. Sure, he made a mistake, but he's a human being after all, and we still love seeing him on the big screen, so let's get out and support his movie. And if any movie's gonna put him over again, this is probably the one. Like the other films in the franchise, Bad Boys Ride or Die is still a blast with Adil and Bilal cranking up the comedy but also delivering some potent action sequences. Here's something unexpected though. The two best action scenes in the movie actually have nothing to do with Will Smith and Martin Lawrence. Rather, Jacob Scipio, who returns as Mike's cartel killer son Armando as a brutal prison yard beatdown with some inmates who are sent to kill him, with him dispatching them in a way that sets him up as a pretty solid action hero in his own right. He has a much expanded role in this movie. And the other is when Marcus's Marine son-in-law, Dennis Green's Reggie, who's always just been shown playing video games pretty passively in the last two movies, turns out to be an unstoppable killer when the Bernard family suffers a home invasion. Both of these set pieces will likely get audience members cheering. 
The movie also pays tribute to the original Michael Bay classics by having Lorne Balfe's score heavily sample and pay tribute to Mark Mancina's classic soundtrack for the first film. It hit all the right buttons for me nostalgia-wise. If the movie suffers from anything, it's due to the fact that Eric Dane's banker, a former DE agent turned cartel guy, is a little too mild-mannered a villain. This is especially true if you compare him to the scenery-chewing Kate de Castillo from the last movie, with the film really kind of crying out for somebody a little bit more over-the-top given the vibe here. It's also worth saying that some of the red herrings are a little too obvious, while Better Call Saul's Rhea Seahorn is wasted in a role that winds up being very inconsequential. Nunez also takes a bit of a backseat this time compared to the last film, although Ludwig and Hudgens actually have nicely expanded roles, with it feeling like perhaps some seeds are being dropped to perhaps spin the franchise off with them in Scipio, which actually wouldn't be a bad idea at all. In a summer that's been rocked by a lot of movies underperforming at the box office, the old-fashioned appeal of Bad Boys Ride or Die shouldn't be underestimated. The directors have bounced back nicely from Batgirl being shelved, delivering another slam-bang installment into a franchise that could wind up being a pretty legit hit, even if Smith still rubs some people the wrong way. This is a solid comeback role for him, with the movie working overtime to remind us that, hey, even if our heroes may seem larger than life on the screen, at the end of the day, they're still human, and it's hard not to once again root for these bad boys to keep the franchise going for years to come. I give this one a surprisingly strong 8 out of 10. I really enjoyed it. Rated R.